فؤادك الايام فتا وتنحي الحرف We're now going to go into the third type of kalam. According to uh, Ibn Ajurrum, he calls it kalam, but we said that the best thing would be to call it karima. The third type of uh, kalam according to Ibn Ajurrum. قَالَ وَالْحَرْفُ مَا لَا يَسْلُحُ مَعْهُ Alhamdulillah. يَهْدِكُمْ اللَّهُ يَسْلَحُ عَلَكُمْ الْحَرْفُ قَالَ وَالْحَرْفُ مَا لَا يَسْلُحُ مَعْهُ دَلِيلُ الْإِسْمِ وَلَا دَلِيلُ الْفِعْلِ حَرْف Harf is a particle. He said, Ibn Ajurrum, والحرف a particle. ما لا يصلح معه دليل الاسم. It is anything that it's not befitting for it, meaning it doesn't accept uh, the signs of a noun nor a sign of a verb. A particle, a harf is what? Anything that doesn't accept the sign of a noun and it will never enter it. And the signs that enter a verb, it won't enter it. This is called a what? It's called a harf, a particle. It is called a particle. Well, harf, a particle. ما لا يصلح معه دليل الاسم ولا دليل الفعل. The signs of a noun and the signs of a verb both cannot enter it. They are both cannot. They can both. They both cannot enter it. So here, basically, the sign of a harf is what? Adamiya. It has no sign. Um, ولذلك uh, الحريري in his مقا in uh, ملحة العراب ودري هي سيد uh, حريري لا الأخضري أبو عبد الرحمن الأخضري لا حريري the author of ملحة العراب حريري he said والحرف ما ليس له علامة فقس على ما أقول تكون علامة حرف is anything that doesn't have a sign. It doesn't have a sign. Its sign is that it doesn't have a sign. And at the grammarians, they had a discussion. How can something exist and not have a sign? It exists, but it doesn't have a sign. So how does it exist? How do you identify it? How do you know it? That's something we're going to have to talk about later. وَالْحَرْفُ مَا لَا يَصْلُحُ مَعْهُ دَلِيلُ الْإِسْمِ وَلَا دَلِيلُ الْفِعْلِ وَأَقُولُ Now we're going to go into the speech of Muhammad Muhyiddin Abdul Hamid. He said, وَأَقُولُ I will say. Which is the author of Tuhfatu Saniya. He said, Wa aqulu, I will say, Ya tamayyazu al harfu an akhawayhi al ismi wal fi'li bi annahu la yasluhu bi annahu la yasluhu dukhulu alamati min alamati al asma il mutakadimati wa la gayriha alayhi. He said that the harf is distinguished from its two brothers, ism and a fi'l. The harf is distinguished, it is categorized from the noun and the verb by what? That it is not correct for it to enter it. A sign. From the signs. Al asma'i from the signs of the noun. It can't enter it. Al mutaqaddimati that were aforementioned. Al mutaqaddimati aforementioned, which we've previously spoken about. ولا غيرها عليه and other than it. كما just like لا يصح لا يصح دخول علامة من علامات الأفعال the same way that it cannot enter it a sign from the signs of a verb cannot also enter a particle. التي سبق بيانها which it has preceded us clarifying that. سبق means what? What by? We've spoken about it previously. What have we spoken about? We've spoken about the signs of a verb. Bayanuha is clarification. وَلَا غَيْرِهَا عَلَيْهِ And other than it can't enter it. وَمِثَالُهُ Example of a particle is مِنْ وَهَلْ وَلَمْ He chose three types of it to use it as an example. The, word, the first one is مِنْ The second one is what? هَلْ And the third one is what? Lam. Why did he choose these three huruf or these three particles from all of the particles that he could have chosen? Each of these three signifies a category of the categories of a particle. The particle harf is divided into three. Huruf which are mushtarika. It enters the fi'l and it enters also a 
it enters a ism and it enters a verb. There are huruf, particles that enter a noun and they also enter verbs, these particles. <laughs> like the word hal. The word hal or the, the, the harf hal, it enters onto a noun as much as it enters onto a, a verb. The word lam is mukhtasu bil af'al, it's specific for the verb. It's specific, the word lam, it only enters onto a verb. And the word min, the word min is mukhtasu bil asma' it's specific for the noun. It doesn't enter any other, it doesn't enter a verb. It only enters a noun. So that's why he chose those three. So the word min is mukhtasu bil asma' The word hal is what? Mushtaraka. Bain al asma' wal af'al. And the word lam is what? The word lam is mukhtasun bil af'al. It's specific for the verbs. Very good. That's why he chose those three. The sharih, Muhammad Muhyiddin Abdul Hamid. Hadi al kalimatu thalatha. These three letters, or these three words. Hadi al kalimatu thalatha tu hurufun. These three, min, hal, wa lam. They are words which are particles. They fall, fall under the category of a harf. So you can't call min a ism. You can't call hal an ism. You can't call lam an ism. Nor can you call all three of them a verb. They are what? They are huruf. They are particles. لِأَنَّهَا Why are they? لِأَنَّهَا لَا تَقْبَلُ al Because it does not accept al. If you, the word uh, min, you can't say uh, and it won't accept it for you to say Al-Min. No, not at all. Walat Tanween. And it doesn't accept Tanween. You can't say Minun. Minin. Minan. You can't say that. It doesn't accept it. Wala Yajuzu. And it is also not befitting. Dukhulu Harf al Khafdi Aleha. A Harf, which is Huruf al Khafd, cannot enter it. So the Sheikh then says, فَلَا يَصِحُ أَن تَقُولَ It is not correct for you to say أَلْمِن وَلَا أَن تَقُولَ For you to also say مِنٌ وَلَا أَن تَقُولَ إِلَى مِن You can't say that. إِلَى مِن You can't say that. وَكَذَلِكَ بَقِيَّةُ الْحُرُوفِ And you can do the same with all the other remaining particles. All of them are the same. Min is only an example. But all of them are like that. They all won't accept al. They all won't accept tanween. They all won't accept harf min huruf al khafti to go before it. And who? What were the signs for those? Those were signs uniquely known for who? They were signs uniquely known for a noun. So now we realize that the huruf they don't accept the sign of a noun. We tried it on it and it won't. Wa ayyadan also la yasihu an tadkhula alayhi sin. Sin cannot enter huruf al khafti. وَلَا سَوْفَ And also sofa doesn't enter onto حروف الخفضي. وَلَا, ولا تَأُ التَّأْنِيثِ السَّاكِنَةِ And also تَأُ التَّأْنِيثِ السَّاكِنَةِ will also not enter onto a harf. <coughs> وَلَا قَدْ And also قَدْ doesn't go. وَلَا غَيْرِهَا And other than it مِمَّا هُوَ عَلَامَاتٌ عَلَى أَنَّ الْكَلِمَةَ فِعْلٌ Also, the signs that indicate that this word is a verb, those signs, they don't enter it. So, all of the Signs that we've taken from the noun, if we try it on a harf, we realize that it doesn't accept it. We tried also to place in it fi'li, the signs known for the verb onto a harf. It also doesn't accept it. So what became clear to us? It became clear to us that a harf does not accept the signs of a noun and it also does not accept the signs of a verb. It doesn't. Tamreen un exercise. Tamreen un exercise. Ba' place. Kulla kalimatin every word. Min al kalimati al atiyati in the upcoming words. Fi kalamin mufidin in a in a complete sentence. Yahsurus sukutu alayhi. The person who you're speaking to ha, will become silent. A sentence which is complete. So why is he saying to you sentence which is complete? Because you've studied what it means. Kalam uh, is what? Sahih? So it has to be a complete sentence. So 
He wants a sentence like that. And the words are an-nakhlatu, palm tree, I'm a date tree. Al-filu, elephant. Yanamu, sleeps. Fahima, he understood. Al-hadiqa, garden, or a park. Al-ardu, the earth. Al-ma'u, water. Ya'kulu, he's eating. Ya'kulu is, he's eating. Al-thamara is the crops. Al-fakiha is the fruits. Yahsudu is to reap or to harvest. Yudakiru is to revise. Yudakiru is to revise. That's the first exercise. The second exercise is fil makani al Place in the empty spot. Min kulli mithalin. In every, sorry, min kulli mithalin. In every example. Min al amthilatil atiyati. In the upcoming examples. Kalimatan. Place A. Place a word. يَتِمُّ بِهَا الْمَعْنَى In which the sentence will become complete. وَبَيِّنْ And clarify. بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ After that. عَدَدَ أَجْزَاءِ كُلِّ مِثَالٍ The number uh, of every example. وَنَوْعَ كُلِّ جُزْءٍ And also the type of every, uh, every one of it. The type of all of them. So the word يَحْفَظُ الدَّرْسَ يَحْفَظُ الدَّرْسَ Memorize the lesson. الثَّورُ الثَّورُ الْأَرْضَ You place, so the word يَحْفَظُ الدَّرْسَ You place in between it what? You, the correct word. The word الثَّورُ الْأَرْضَ The word before it, you place a word. I'm not going to explain it to you because if I do then that gives you guys the, the answer. I don't want to. Um, if there's a strange word, we'll explain it, inshallah. Yasbahu fi nahri. The word yasbahu is to swim. Tasiru fi bihari. Tasir. You guys know tasir? Is to sail. Sail. Yar and fi bihari. Bihari is known. Yartafi'u fi jaw. Is that known? Yakthuru bi biladi misra. That is known. Al walidu ala abna'i. Al walidu ala abna'i. الولد المؤدب مؤدب is mannered السمك في الماء علي الزهرة that's all known بين الأفعال الماضية clarify the past verb والأفعال المضارعة and the present verb وأفعال الأمر and the the verbs which are commands. So you have to clarify which is the past verb, present verb, or the future verb, or the command verb. Well, asma, and also those which are nouns. Well, huruf, and those which are particles. Min al ibarat al atiyati in the upcoming sentences. Ma ja'ala Allahu li rajulin min qalbayni fi jawfi. So you're going to look at each one and you're going to say particle, verb, noun. And then if it's a verb, you say which type of verb it is past, present, future. Okay? يَحْرِصُ الْعَاقِلُ عَلَى رِضَى رَبِّهِ اِحْرُثْ لِدُنْيَاكَ كَأَنَّكَ تَعِيشُ أَبَدًا So, يَحْرِصُ الْعَاقِلُ The smart one, he strives to pleasing his Lord. يَحْرِصُ الْعَاقِلُ The smart one, he strives عَلَى رِضَى رَبِّهِ in pleasing his Lord. Plant, the word Harth is to what? Harth is when the person, he plants the seeds. Plant the seeds in this dunya as though you're going to live forever. يَسْعَ الْفَتَى لِأُمُورٍ لَيْسَ يُدْرِكُهَا He strives, the young boy, to matters which he doesn't comprehend it. لَن تُدْرِكَ الْمَجْدَ حَتَّى تَلْعَقَ الصَّبِرَ You're never going to reach honor until you Attach yourself to and you gain patience. In tasduq tasud. If you tell the truth, you... These are hikam. These are words which are taken from wise Arab sayings. Qad aflaha... And this, of course the statement, speeches of Allah. Qad aflaha man zakaha wa qad khaba man dasaha. All of these are what? All of these you have to bring out those which are fi'il madi, those which are fi'il mudari, those which are fi'il amar, those which are nouns, those which are huruf, each one, you bring it that, and I will check that. Bithni Allah al-Kareem. 
we have now finished huh? we have now finished um, we've finished kalam and it's three types the author now is going to go into babul i'rabi we're going to now move on to the, the, the core essence of grammar i'rab i'rab brothers means so this chapter is we've closed the, the introduction is over now that was the introduction this is the this is where the book starts from babu al i'rabi i'rab means grammatical analysis it's to grammatically analyze words that's what i'rab means babu al i'rabi the chapter of grammatically analyzing words al i'rab to grammatically analyze a word means, how, what does it mean? When we say i'rab, we're, go, we're going to grammatically analyze the word. What does that mean? It means, It is the changing that occurs at the ending of the word. It is the changing that occurs at the ending of the word. Why? لِاخْتِلَافِ الْعَوَامِلِ الدَّاخِلَةِ عَلَيْهَا it is the changing that occurs at the ending of the word because of the factors changing it. Every different situation that it goes in or every different factors and external factors huh, that enter onto it, they change it. And that changing is either explicit or implicit. It is either explicit, we can see it, or it's implicit. Okay? So this is what the word I'rab means. I'rab here is the word of the word of the Three points that you just have to understand from this. Just three things. First of all, it is changing that occurs. In the ending of the word, pay attention. One. It is changing. I'rab means three things, that's it, based on Ibn al-Jurrum's definition. First, it is, there are changing that is occurring from the ending of the word. So we're not going to look at the middle or the front. That's not our job. We're studying a grammar book. The grammarians, they only analyze the ending of the word. The ending of the word, one. So it is the changing that occurs at the ending of the the word. The second thing is the factors that change it from situation to situation. So this word goes through, it goes into sentences and every sentence, because it is changing from one situation to another, observing it is also what gra grammarians do. I'll give you guys an example. For example, Ja'a Zaydun. Ja'a, pay, just keep paying attention to the word Zayd. Look at that name Zayd, okay? And look at the last ending of it when I pronounce it. Ja'a Zaydun. Good. Ra'aytu Zaydan. Marartu bi Zaydin. Zayd has changed in every situation. The grammarians are going to look at the ending of the word Zayd. So they're going to say, Ja'a Zaydun. Dun. The dal, here it is marfu'ah. Ra'aytu Zaydan. Zaydan here is mansub. Marartu bi Zaydin. Here it is majroor. Why? So the changing has occurred at the ending of the word Zayd, the dal. Halatul raf'i wal nasbi wal jarri. It changed. The changing is the ending of the word. Ja'a Zaydun. The, z the za and the ya haven't changed. What's changing is the dal. And that's what we observe. We don't care about even if the za and the ya change, we don't care. Our concern is the ending of the word zayd, the da. Ja'a zaydun. Mara'aytu zaydan. Marartu bi zaydin. So the grammar grammarians, they were looking at the end and they see that. They automatically know something's happening here. Good. Automatically, the changing of the ending of the word. The second thing was what? Each place that Zayd is in, one time it was the subject, which is the first one. Ja'a Zaydun. Who did the coming? Zayd came. 
Aha. So Zayd is the subject. He's the one who is doing the verb, the action of coming in. Good. The second one, it's an object. The action that the subject is doing, it's happening on Zayd. Which is, I am the one who the I ra'aytu is I saw. So, saw is a verb. And the one who saw, it's me. Who did the seeing occur on? The object is who here? Zaid. So Zaid, when it was a subject, and when it's a, uh, when it was an object, uh, sorry, a subject, and when it was a object, it changed from its grammatical positioning. It changes. And then the last one was what? There was a particle before it, which was the ba. And we took before that these particles, whenever they go before a noun, they change it to a jar. And we're going to see that even more, inshallah, as we come to it.